Hey, Trig students, how you doing? Let's find three more identities that we haven't talked about yet. Um, so let's say I have, I have an angle. So uh, here it is on the unit circle. And you'll notice that the cosine of this angle is negative 12 thirteenths. And the sine of the angle is 5 thirteenths. So what I'm wondering is, what about two times that angle? What's the cosine of that? What's the sine of that? Well, <clears throat> fact is, if you're hoping it's, it's difficult, I'm, I've got some bad news. It's actually really, really easy. Okay? So let's start off with, we know that the cosine of alpha is negative 12 thirteenths. And we know the sine of alpha is 5 thirteenths. Okay? Alpha is in quadrant 2. Well, uh, if I wanted to find the sine of 2 alpha, for example, I'd say, well, the sine of 2 alpha, well, I can think of alpha as 2 alpha as uh, alpha plus alpha, right? And I have an identity for the sine of the sum of two angles. That's just going to be the sine of alpha. Remember, sine of alpha times cosine of beta plus cosine of alpha times sine of beta. Well, this, time's, this time beta equals alpha. So it'll be sine of alpha, cosine of alpha, plus cosine of alpha, sine of alpha. Well, it <clears throat> doesn't take long to see this and this are the same thing. So this is just equal to 2 times the sine of alpha times the cosine of alpha. All right. Well, I happen to know what that is. This is 2 times 5 thirteenths times negative 12 thirteenths. 2 times 5 is 10, times negative 12 is negative 120, and 13 times 13 is going to be 169. So that's the sine of 2 times alpha. Okay? If you remember, uh, we were ending up in uh, quadrant 4, so a negative sine actually makes sense. Okay? What about the cosine? Well, cosine of 2 alpha is going to be, um, well, it'll be the cosine of alpha plus alpha. And of course, uh, cosine of alpha plus beta is cosine alpha, cosine beta, minus sine alpha, sine beta. So in this case, beta is alpha. So this is going to be cosine alpha, cosine alpha, minus sine alpha, sine alpha. And that's just equal to cosine squared of alpha minus sine squared of alpha. All right, I can do that. Cosine squared is, the, if the cosine is negative 12 over 13, the cosine squared is going to be negative 12 squared is 144 over 13 squared is 169. So this will be 144 over 169 minus and the sine squared, that's, the sine is 5 over 13, so sine squared will be 25 over 169. 25 over 169. And common denominators, that makes life easy. So 144 minus 25 is going to be 119 over 169. Oops, over 169. Okay, so my sine of 2 alpha is negative 120 over 169. And my cosine of 2 alpha is 119 over 169. So this looks like it's really close to uh, negative 45 degrees because those are almost the same magnitude, but not quite. Now, <clears throat> the, the, what I really want you to focus on, though, is not what we came up with at the end. What I want you to focus on is this right here and this right here. Because what we did in the process of solving these is we came up with a couple of new identities. That is the sine of 2 alpha and the cosine of 2 alpha. So let's, uh, let's get rid of this for a second. So what I see is the sine of 2 alpha is, uh, that's going to be 2 times the sine of alpha times the cosine of alpha. Meanwhile, 
the cosine of 2 alpha is cosine squared of alpha minus sine squared of alpha. We just proved that just a second ago. However, remember the Pythagorean identity that says sine squared plus cosine squared is 1? Well, that means right here for the cosine squared, I could call this 1 minus sine squared of alpha, right? Minus sine squared of alpha. And 1 minus sine squared of alpha minus sine squared of alpha is just 1 minus 2 sine squared of alpha. So let me write that equals 1 minus 2 times the sine squared of alpha. Yeah. So we actually have two different identities for the cosine of 2 alpha. But wait, um, sine squared right here, couldn't we just refer to that as 1 minus the cosine squared? Because sine squared plus cosine squared is 1. So if we do that, then this would be the cosine squared of alpha minus 1 minus the cosine squared of alpha. And if I do that, then I end up with the cosine squared of alpha minus 1 plus the cosine squared of alpha. And cosine squared of alpha plus cosine squared of alpha is just 2 cosine squared of alpha minus 1. So what I end up with is 3, not 1, not 2, but 3 different identities for the cosine of 2 alpha. And you may be thinking to yourself, well, I don't need three different identities. I only need one. You're kind of right. But uh, having the three actually makes life a little easier. Uh, there are times when you're just going to have uh, the sine of alpha. There are times when you're just going to have the cosine of alpha. So sometimes this one will be easier to use. Sometimes this one will be easier to use. And sometimes that first one will be easier to use. So uh, there's one more thing <clears throat> that we got to think about, though, and that is tangent. Uh -huh. What about the tangent of 2 alpha? What's that going to be? Well, it's going to be the tangent of alpha plus alpha, right? Tangent of alpha plus alpha. Let's use that identity. Let's use the, the tangent of alpha plus beta. Let's see, what was it? It was tangent of alpha plus tangent of beta divided by 1 minus the product of tangent of alpha, tangent of beta. So that means this is going to be tangent of alpha plus tangent of alpha over 1 minus tangent of alpha, tangent of alpha. And that means that's 2 times the tangent of alpha over 1 minus the tangent squared of alpha. So we have, uh, da, 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 let's do that, OK? Tangent of 2 alpha is 2 times the tangent of alpha over 1 minus tangent squared of alpha. So <clears throat> these are three identities that it's nice to uh, 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 keep in your back pocket. Um, let's do another example, okay? Let's use these things. Let's say, uh, let's say we're going to find out, um, let's say we've got theta, which is in quadrant 4, okay? So if it's in quadrant 4, that's uh, down here. That's going to give us a negative sine and a positive cosine, okay? Now, what else do we know about uh, theta? We know that the sine of theta is negative 20 over 29. Sine of theta is negative 20 over 29, okay? So uh, what I want to know is, what's the sine of 2 theta? What's the cosine of 2 theta? What's the tangent of 2 theta? Well, I guess before I find the sine of 2 theta, the cosine of 2 theta, and the tangent of 2 theta, I guess I'd better find the cosine and tangent of just theta. All right? Um, OK, well, I know that uh, this squared, negative 20 over 29, squared plus the cosine squared of theta equals 1. So that means cosine squared of theta equals 1 minus uh, 20 over 29 squared. That's going to be 400 over, ooh, I got to cheat and look here, uh, 841. 
okay? And so if I do uh, 1 minus 400 over 841, I get 441 over 841, and that tells me... <clears throat> is that right? Yes. Uh, that tells me that this, uh, that's the cosine squared, so that means the cosine of theta is going to be the square root of that, which is 21 over 29. Okay? So the sine is negative 20 over 29, the cosine is 21 over 29, and the tangent is the sine over the cosine. So that tells me the tangent of theta is negative 20 over 21. All right? So now let's use that. So the sine of 2 theta will be, let's use our, our new identity that we, that we just learned. It's going to be 2 times the sine of theta times the cosine of theta. So that's going to be 2 times negative 20 over 29 times, uh, there it is, 21 over 29. And what does that get us? That gets us negative 840 over 841. So a number that's really close to uh, negative 1, but not quite. Um, so that's the sine of 2 theta. So if the sine is really, really close to negative 1, that means the cosine is going to be a little bitty number. It's going to be something that's pretty close to 0. Let's see if that's the case. It better be the case. So cosine of 2 theta is going to be, well, what should I use? Generally what I do, if I have both the sine and the cosine, I use both the sine and the cosine. So I'm going to do cosine squared. And uh, so the cosine squared of theta minus the sine squared of theta. Uh, as it turns out, I already know what the cosine squared of theta is. It's 441 over 841. And the sine squared of theta is, it's this thing squared, which is 400 over 841. And that turns out to be 41 over 841. Uh, yeah, it's a pretty small number, so that does make sense. Okay, now the tangent of uh, 2 theta, I already know what it is because I could easily just do the sine of 2 theta divided by the cosine of 2 theta and I'll see that it's negative 840 over 41. But uh, let's do it anyway. Okay, let's use our, uh, uh, our, our identity. And uh, here, let me, let me get rid of this. So the tangent of theta was negative 20 over 21. Okay. So the tangent of 2 theta is going to be 2 times the tangent of theta over 1 minus tangent squared of theta. So that equals 2 times negative 20 over 21 over 1 minus negative 20 over 21 squared. Oh boy. Okay, so this is negative 40 over 21 divided by... I need some help. Uh, divided by 1 minus 1 minus uh, is that 400 over 441? Yeah. 400 over 441. And so uh, this is, can we, can you still see this? I believe so. This is negative 40 over 21 divided by uh, 41 over 441 and come down here, that's going to be negative 40 over 21 times 441 over 41. And this whole thing turns out to be, uh, uh, let's see, the 441 over 21, I can simplify that. Negative 40 times 21 is negative 800 and, let me do this right, yep, negative 840. And that's over 41, just like I said it was going to be, okay? It's a little complicated with the fractions there, but just grab a calculator and life will be easy. All right, so uh, these are uh, what what do I want to come? What I want you to come away with is basically the knowledge of these three uh, um, identities, which are actually more like uh, five identities. Okay, and that is. 
these right here, okay? Be able to use them, be able to uh, uh, plug the values into them, and um, in the next video, I wanna show you a, how we can look at these identities and actually, and, and kind of not actually derive them, but see why they're true simply by looking at graphs, okay? Until then, see ya.